and still in Edo State, security agencies on Saturday embarked on a combined exercise tagged interagency's shore of force to alert residents of the state of the agency's preparedness for the September 19th governorship election. The security agencies that participated in the exercise included the Nigerian Army, Nigerian Police Force and the Directorate of State Services, amongst others. Addressing journalists after the exercise, CSC, CSP Chidi Wanvuzo, the police public relations officer Edo Command said the exercise was to ensure that the state was well monitored ahead of the election. Wambos also said that it was to send a strong signal to criminal elements in the state that security agencies were ready to ensure a peaceful election. He further said that the security agencies were working with the Independent National Electoral Commission to ensure credible elections come next Saturday. And joining us live is Gide Benson, a public affairs commentator, and also Elder John Negeron, uh, an entrepreneur and politician. Thank you both for joining us. Thank you for having me. I'm going to start Thanks with, so with much. Uh, Gide Benson. I'll bring you in first. Yeah, the election is one week away. What would you say is your assessment on the level of preparation by security agents? Well, the first thing that has come to mind every time I think about Edo is the drama that played out in Kogi State um, November last year. Um, I'm afraid that there might be a repeat of such level of violence. Uh, we should see more than the kind of um, embrace that the two candidates had in the Palace of the Upper Benin. However, I see that that, um, that show of camaraderie was clearly just for the cameras. On ground, what you see is very different from what they demonstrated in the Palace of the Oba. So they have a responsibility to caution their supporters to refrain from all, all forms of violence. And the security agencies also have a higher responsibility to ensure that they are neutral and they nip all forms of crisis in the board, not on the day of the elections. All right, and um, Elder John, let's see, also hear from you. I want to know what your thoughts are with regards preparation by security agents. How, how, do you, how prepared do you think they are? You see, thank you for having me today. Uh, just like we've been having over time, the Nigerian security system has not been able to improve, especially on cases like this. We've seen it in 2019, and just like GD said, November last year, there have never really been a major improvement. The numbers of uh, major armies you've seen everywhere, talents of soldiers coming around, will not really, really change anything. I think the major thing here still depends on the people who are actually running, the two giants in the field. If they speak to their, their various camps to shield their sword, I think we're going to have a very better headway. If we rely on the police, because over time we've seen either the police going for or against a particular political party. I can't bet on their support. Kogi State's own was so clear, and I'm sure they're going to be a repeat of such. But if we have the two aspirants or candidates coming on ground and say, now we are going to do this, it's not going to be violence, and I tell you, it's going to be like that. But just on the police or other security systems or agencies, I'm not so sure. Talk, talk, sure. Talking about the police now, GD Benson, I want you to speak on this. The IG deployed eight commissioners of police uh, for the election. Does this send a message across, you know, um, of possible violence and hence uh, the police doesn't want to take chances um, in um, Edo State? And also, is this really necessary in an election? Well, because of the peculiarity of Nigeria, yes. I mean, in other climes, this shouldn't be. An election should be a contest of ideas. Because if you're deploying eight commissioners for one state, imagine <clears throat> if you were to be in a general election where election was taking place in many other states in Nigeria. It is sad, the, the level of our security system, because it, what it means is that security personnel have been moved from different states to be able to beef up the security in Edo State, all because of one election. I, my counsel will be to the supporters of the two major political parties, and it is that they should not allow themselves to be used as cannon fodders. On the day of the elections in Kogi State, the people that died have been forgotten. The political the gladiators have carried on with their lives. And if this is repeated in Edo State next week Saturday, it will just be a disgrace. At the end of the day, 
However, the pendulum swings. Obaseki will be fine. Ize Yamu will be fine. The main political giants in both political parties and other political parties will be fine. So deploying eight commissioners of police is an indication that there is something that something is wrong and they, they probably have some security report that is going to be increased violence as we go into the last seven days. All right, and um, back to Elder John now. Talk about INEC. Um, how do you think the Independent National Electoral Commission can cope um, with these uh, reports of um, possible violence? Yes, I, I heard uh, someone talking about the NYC uh, youth, that they should be safe, that they do should protect them and all of that. You see, we're still on the same cycle. In a normal day, it shouldn't have been like this, okay? Uh, INEC has always been INEC. 2015, 2019, and trust me, it's just going to be like that again. I am not really seeing... Let, let's be hopeful that this time we're going to have an INEC that is going to play the game of a re and an opera, you know, that it should be. But for a though, you know, I wouldn't want to say too much, but something happened in 2016. We all knew that. Like having an to probably influence a particular political party. Like this is what I keep telling them on the other side, uh, the PDP. In 2016, Obasaki happened to be the person who has the state power in Kubensi, he has a federal, he had the police, he had INEC, the case may be, and, and he won. Now, he doesn't seem to have the state, the, the federal, or the one they call the federal might and all of that. And you see a lot of issues of coming, they're going to ring the election, INEC is going to ring the election and all of that. You see, when it favors us, it is called connection or probably a miracle. But if it does not, then we call foul, we call corruption, we start shouting about ringing. I next should play their part as an unbiased umpire. Let Edo be peaceful. You see, the security has a place to play, uh, the role to play. But I next, if I next becomes very, very unbiased in this particular game, I tell you, the security agencies may not really have much work to do. Edo is literally peaceful. They are peaceful people. Forget these things that goes around the internet, uh, the social media about they're going to be war, they're going to be this. It might not really be like us like that, okay? Because the margins are clear. Let INEC do their real professional job as the law entails them to. And let the security agencies do so also. And I tell you, it's going to be peaceful. Trust me. Next Saturday is going to be one of the most interesting elections ever had in Nigeria. If all agencies involved keep to the rules of law. J.D. Benson, what, is, what faith do you also have in the Independent National Electoral Commission um, in being able to play um, its role um, um, uh, perfectly? Actually, what I have for INEC is sympathy. Uh, INEC, like every one of us, is at the mercy of the security agencies and the touts and criminals or the brigands that are always used to frustrate the electoral process. But added to that is, for me, this would have been a golden opportunity for INEC to begin to test whether it's e-voting or virtual voting. Because this is one state, um, its commissioners of police have been deployed. Um, the logistics of managing such a process in one state would have been easier. They would have been able to test this very well and see how they can extrapolate on it. But clearly, they haven't thought about that. I have very little faith in, in INEC. I, I've always done so because, again, they are at the mercy of this same system that we all live in, which is always um, in need of improvement. Elder John Neger and uh, J.D. Benson, thank you both for speaking with us. Um, the elections, uh, you know, next weekend, and I, I look, at, look forward to having another conversation with you both um, before and after. Thank you very much. Thank you so much.